shoulder rests. Should you use one? A lot of famous players don't use shoulder rests, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use a shoulder rest either. Everyone is different. I had a student come to me recently who had never used a shoulder rest when learning violin, and his posture was so bad, he couldn't play in tune, he couldn't shift, he couldn't do vibrato. So I took the shoulder rest off my violin and gave it to him and said, have a go, and instantly it improved his posture and his shoulders and his playing. The most important thing about playing violin is your alignment. So your, your back, your neck needs to be fairly straight, your shoulders need to be just normal, and when you have the shoulder, when you have the violin on your shoulder, you should just be sitting on your shoulder, and all you do is turn your head and a little bit down, not too far down, and your shoulder should, your violin should sit in there fairly comfortably. And when you're a new um, student to violin, most things feel uncomfortable. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky to tell what's best. When you put the violin on your shoulder, the most important thing is not to shrug your shoulder. Okay. The other thing is, when you are trying out different shoulder rests, if you do decide to use one, don't test it out with your arm down. You need to actually bring your arm up because your your shoulder will come up a little bit higher and that is the more natural playing position. So you do need to test out shoulder rests with your arm up in playing position. Uh, I've read a few different articles and listened to different players about their opinions on shoulder rests and it really comes down to the individual. No two bodies are the same and also playing styles are the same. So there are no rules, there are really just guidelines. So uh, I read a article in the Strad magazine and they call the uh, shoulder rest and chin rest the club sandwich. So you've got your shoulder, then you've got your shoulder rest on top of that, and then you've got the violin, then you've got the chin rest, and then you've got your chin. So no two shoulders are the same and no two chins are the same or jaw lines for that matter. So that also means that your shoulder rest might not be the same as someone else's and your chin rest may not be the same as someone else's. Shoulder rest or some kind of pad can just be as simple as a rubber band and some uh, non-slip material wrapped around a cloth, a tea towel or something like that. That's often quite a good solution for young kids. You can also buy um, other things such as, such as something like this, which is really just a little padded um, piece of material with a couple of um, elastic bands. So these can be quite useful as well for small kids. Uh, I've got a Kun shoulder rest and I've pretty much always had one. Uh, when I was younger I used one called Play On Air and uh, you actually it was like a little kind of balloon which you blew into and, and inflated and that was quite comfortable. Um, but then I went to the Kun style and, I, and I've used them ever since. The other main style is the Wolf shoulder rest. And these, I think, are more for people who have a longer neck and who need a little bit of extra height. Um, those shoulder rests are much more adjustable and the height um, can really be quite a lot higher than the Kun style shoulder rests. The uh, main advantage of a shoulder rest besides your posture and alignment is that uh, it raises it a little bit off your shoulder, off your body. So your body is not coming into contact with the violin, which means that your violin, uh, the vibrations are not going to be dampened by, uh, by your body. So whether you use a shoulder rest or not, the, the main principles are that you need to be comfortable and your left hand needs to be able to shift freely. Okay, and uh, so shifting and vibrato very freely and your scroll needs to be either flat or a little bit raised up so that your bow will not be going down towards the scroll. So if your violin is pointing down, then your bow is naturally going to go down. If it's up, it's going to come a little bit up closer to the bridge. So that's going to be a big advantage in having your scroll more upright. So these are my ideas on shoulder rests. As I said, no two people are the same. Um, I use a Kun shoulder rest, which is quite lowly set, and then I also actually have a custom 
made uh, Chin Rest by um, a violin maker, Les Bellini, who made that just for me. And a lot of people don't like that, but they don't have a chin like mine. So uh, this is how I hold the violin, and it's very comfortable for me. I'm not um, shrugging my shoulder, my head's not coming down too far. So the best thing is to do is uh, experiment and make sure that you're comfortable and uh, try a few different things if nothing has worked for you so far. In the links below, I've put a few, um, a few links. So one of them is the, um, is the article that I read in the, in the Strad magazine. Uh, another one is a link to the Hilary Hahn uh, YouTube video. Um, she goes into great depth of um, using a shoulder rest and chin rest. And another one is the principles of violin playing and teaching by Ivan Galamian, which uh, is really just common sense, you know. And as I said before, was uh, goes by the principles. There, there are no set rules. So, good luck with it, and see you next time.